All right, the upcoming season of Dexter, September 26th, the debuts on Showtime. If you don't own Showtime or you don't get Showtime, shame on you, order it. I know, I can't wait. Um, we've put together a little package, some scenes from this upcoming season. This is the first game by our new executive producer, Manny Cotto, everybody. Please welcome him. Another executive producer, Sarah Colleton. Here she comes, Sarah. Producer, uh, new to Dexter this year, Chip Johannesson. You know him as Harry Morgan, if Dexter had just listened to Dad, none of this would have happened. James Remar, everybody. Starring as Deborah Morgan, Dexter's foster sister, Jennifer Carpenter. And lastly, the man himself, star and executive producer of Dexter, Michael C. Hall. After watching that trailer, now that Rita is gone, let's start with the, some of the producers, maybe you guys can address this. It seems like this opens up endless possibilities for where to take the character of Dexter, given what he's just been through. As, does that free you up creatively when you go into a new season? For us, was um, that we were left with this amazing event at the end of season four, and we wanted to uh, go through it with this character that we love as much as everybody here does. And we have this guy here who is um, his wife is dead, his son was born in blood like he like he was, and it's all he's in this nightmare that is very much of his own creation. So um, we felt like we had a starting point there, and then after that, I think. Uh, it surprised us, and hopefully it surprised everybody here where, where this ended up going. Sarah, you were, we were talking a little bit backstage, and I mentioned um, with Julie Benz now missing, you said it's like losing a member of the family. What's it like um, saying goodbye to someone who's been there so long? Uh, it, it was something I think um, all of us who've been on the show from the beginning never want to go through again. Um, she was such a huge part of our team, as well as being so integral to Dexter's tiny little footsteps towards, you know, being a patchwork doll of having some human emotion. And, uh, the, you know, and she paid a price for his confidence, if you will, his thinking he could have it all. And um, it, was, it was heartbreaking. Michael, maybe you could address it, what it's like, um... Julie leaving and then for yourself and then Rita leaving for, for Dexter, what that means. Um, to see Julie leave was really tough. I mean, <coughs> she'd been someone I'd grown to know and love and respect and enjoy working with over the four seasons that she was with us. Um, for those, she, I do think she's here at Comic-Con, Julie Benz. Um, <laughs> she's in a new show with Michael C. Hickless. <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> pretty exciting. I mean, rarely uh, this far in do you uh, get to completely uh, or, or so fundamentally change the landscape for a character and a character's world. So the, the storytelling possibilities and the character possibilities on that end, it's, it's pretty exciting development, horrifying though it is. Jennifer, the growth of your character well as well has been exponential over the past couple seasons. It seems to be now, finally, she's starting to think something may be up with her brother. And she's starting to peel back those, those layers of the onion a little bit this season. Yeah. Well, I mean, 
I think that's true. I don't think she's actually put the puzzle together so that it reads, my brother's a serial killer. <laughs> but, um, you know, she went through something very similar last year and even the same serial killer. Uh, she lost her love to the same serial killer. So I feel like she's starting this season thinking that maybe they're on common ground. And maybe actually the floodgates might open and she might have the brother she's always suspected that she had. Their grief looks very different, so the suspicion can't help but, but be there. And this feedback is very weird, sorry. <laughs> Will Deborah step up as an aunt too now that the, the kids are sort of on their own? I think she'll step up. I, I can't say that uh, she's going to be great at it. But <laughs> she hasn't dropped the baby yet <laughs> on camera. <laughs> and James, it seems to me that with Dexter on the precipice, kind of staring into the abyss after this event, that Harry's guidance is going to even play a larger role, perhaps this season, in trying to keep him strictly sticking to the code. Well, I, I uh, believe that any time your, your personal life is, is, is rocked by some kind of great fundamental change, then you, you do go back to basics. You do go, you go back to your fundamentals, if you're, and, and that, that holds true in sports, it holds true in professional life, it holds true in acting. If I'm, if I'm puzzled by a part, I, I'll, I'll fall back on technique. Um, so, to be, to be uh, with Dexter is, you know, as, as an actor, for me to be with, with Michael is, is, you know, it's, it's, it's a pinnacle achievement. It's, it's, it's a blast. Um, for Harry to be a voice in, 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 in Dexter's life is, um, it's a, it's a cool dance that we get to do. I, I, I have to make sure that I am not being Harry. I, I have to make sure that I'm being Michael in Harry's voice, going through his checklist. Dexter, not Michael. Dexter. I'm not right, Dexter, Dexter, Dexter. <laughs> Michael is not I'm Harry. Michael's not Dexter. Dexter. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Everybody knows you, man. I didn't have to say that. Like he said. Um, so I just, I, it's, it's, it's a cool thing to do to, to uh, make sure that uh, I, I'm being the, the, Harry's being the fundamental voice of, of, of Dexter's uh, um, path, as, as it were. So whether I get to do more or less is, is I, I, I don't know, but I, it's cool being there. And Manny, you and Chip are kind of the new kids on the block this season. What's it like? What are the challenges for you coming onto a show that's you're jumping on a moving freight train, basically. What are the challenges of jumping onto a show, and especially given how we all got rocked at the end of season four, uh, what does that pose to you as, as a particular challenge? Well, it's a huge challenge. I mean, we, we actually jumped off a moving freight train, which was 24, right. and coming from that show to this, um, you know, it's, it's been real, it's, it's been daunting. I mean, you know, my first pitch for the season was kind of a Jack Bauer, uh, Dexter Morgan matchup. <laughs> didn't quite go over so well, so but, so we had to kind of retrench, but it, it's a different show, a completely different show. One of the things getting used to is, is losing the real-time aspect. We can actually make time cuts. Characters can go places and just cut there. And, uh, but the other thing is the humor. This is, uh, in many ways, a dark comedy, of which 24 had none of, except for Chloe. And uh, it's, it's something, to, you know, it's, it, it, but it, it's, a, it's a challenge in starting any new show, especially with such a great ending to a last season, and an incredible writing staff which was already in place and knew the show, knows the show better than we do. John, what's the overall tone, if you can determine one, for this upcoming season? I feel like last season was sort of Dexter getting more and more in touch with his humanity. What does this season, what is the, the thrust of it for him? What's, it, what's he exploring? I think, uh, I think Dexter is exploring uncharted territory, emotionally, and uh, he's never experienced any of the issues or problems that uh, he's encountering in terms of seeing a single parent for the first time in his life now that Rita's gone, coping with the loss of his children's mother. Everything.